Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Today we're going to be taking a look at this and then we're going to be checking some of the related malware, some from my repository and some from other sources. But first of all, uh, this is a thread I saw on Reddit. I sometimes look at the antivirus subreddit because sometimes you can find some interesting emerging threats there. And what we see here is a conversation between our victim, Kangaroo Funny 1718 I'm not sure if that was an auto-generated uh, username, and they seem to like playing games and they had a discord friendship with zg here now i investigated this because i've seen this profile before and zg was actually hacked as well so if we go here on x zg24 this is the same person and this is all the way back in march so zg was evidently never able to get his account back I would like everyone to know at this point, if you don't know already, that my Discord account has been hacked. If you are friends with, quote, me on Discord, then please block and report this person so support will eventually force delete it. I will return too. I, I will return soon. Now, this happened all the way back in March. Three months later, uh, it seems like Discord are either ignoring this guy or just being utterly incompetent. Uh, they haven't banned or returned this account, and it is still being used for this. So this person who's friends uh, got a message saying, hey, would you like to test out a game? And ran it, of course. And uh, Windows Defender apparently said it was, say, I'm not sure if that's a typo, but if that, that wouldn't shock me. Windows Defender is pretty bad. So Windows Defender told him, save, uh, and then it went on. My Discord started acting weird, and the PC went loud. The hacker sent this DM to Discord. I knew they were going to try and extort me, so I didn't respond. Besides messing up the Discord, the hacker also made it so that Firefox was opening weird pop-ups. Uh, just basic scare tactics. Now, immediately, the victim uh, quickly tries to remove as much with malware bytes, change the passwords, enable 2FA. All of that was done. But then it seems like there were still leftovers. Well, unfortunately, and this does look like a pretty basic info stealer, antiviruses really don't catch info stealers. They'll say they do, but they don't. I'm not a huge fan of malware bytes, but I know a lot of people think it's uh, quite good, uh, but it didn't catch it. So their plan is ultimately to back everything up that matters and then reinstall the PC. That's good advice. The cloud thing could be a bit dicey because my preferred method of doing this would be to simply uh, copy it onto a separate flash drive, ideally with the computer disconnected from the internet so that the hacker would not have any sort of access. So I'm not sure what to do. Well, if those were never registered, they should be fine. So anything that was on that computer, you should assume was compromised because it's going to be near impossible, especially after a partial antivirus scan, to determine exactly what they got. So what is the extent of the information? Everything. Uh, everything on the computer. Nothing on other devices. It is very, very unlikely that they would be able to pivot unless you had cloud accounts maybe they could get into, but probably just what was on the computer. How can you assume? Now, this is kind of the big thing here is because this is an extortion threat. And they're saying, even if you reset your computer, the virus won't go away because it's infected the motherboard and hard drive. Now, this is a lie. This is not possible. Infected the hard drive is arguably true in that the virus is stored on the hard drive. But that does not mean that if you reinstall Windows, the virus would persist. Of course it won't. Hypothetically, it's possible they could be in the bootloader, so you might want to take the extra step when reinstalling to completely wipe the partition. And although it's very unlikely here, it is possible if you use the online reset, that is, if we go, you simply go here instead of using a flash drive, it is possible that a very well-designed piece of malware could uh, beat that. I've been told that that malware exists, but I've never ever seen it. So that's one possibility. But other than that, there isn't much to worry about. Don't keep EXEs from an old drive unless you're really confident. File infectors are rare, but that is possible. And yes, he's not just going to endlessly be able to get back into your accounts. If he could do that, he wouldn't try contact you. And the main reason to try extort people is he's hit a limit with what he can do, and it wasn't a big, uh, wasn't a big win. So now let's try out some of these fake games.
This video is sponsored by Anyrun. We'll be using their platform to help with the analysis. Today, I've got some of my runs here from a few because I've been following the fake game trend. I also did want to add one thing about fake games. So I showed off a fake... So we're just going to take a quick detour to talk about this. So I made a video where I showed a fake clone of this. Well, the real game is actually now out on Kickstarter, so if you did want to buy it, and they actually were nice enough to give me an affiliate, I will put that in the description, because quite a few people, when they watched the video about this one, uh, thought this game actually looked really cool. So if you're interested, I'll have that in the description as well. So we've got some different packages here. So we've got these, and I've also pulled a few rats from Malware Bazaar to show what that looks like. So what does it look like? Well, we're going to go to the video section, first of all. And here we've got a nice interactive view, and we can see, okay, executables are being dropped, and this is, it'll, oftentimes it'll look like a normal, real Windows installer. Quite a few of these games will actually install something, but you can see some things going on in the background here that we'll take a look at that look a bit less than honest. So we've got a task list, which is probably just anti-analysis, and it's getting your computer's GUID. It's doing some crypto. It's checking some other things. App path. This looks mostly like anti-analysis. Now, luckily, we've got this nice filter over here, so we can go. We can actually see these PowerShells, and we can see pretty quickly. I don't like any of that. So, assembly name system security uh, protected data unprotect. So this is a way of exfiltrating your data. What they're doing here. We can go to more info to get a better view. So we're decrypting some data. And this is related to DP API, which is the data protection API that provides user-bound encryption. This is used to protect things like Chrome cookies and other sensitive information. It is impossible, in most cases, once they've gotten the data off your computer to decrypt this. So they have to do it ahead of time. So it can be an indication. Any any suspicious calls to DP API can be a good indication of malware. So this is probably some sort of blob that will then produce a decryption key for something like your Chrome cookies. Now we can go through and we can see what else this did. So it did that. We can also go over to the files and we can see, okay, some stuff. We can figure out what kind of thing was going on here. And we can also see, no, there is no way of creating a post infecting your motherboard. This is quite simple electron-based malware, and we can actually see some, some of the dependencies, and then we can see some DP API stuff, which once again, almost never a good sign if the game has is, is making heavy use of the data protection API. So that's one of our samples. Now let's take a look at this one. This one is called Wild Epic, and it was a bit more convincing this one even had like a weird Cloudflare thing that kind of looked like a click fix tack. We're going to go through it. And, it. and it would download in the background. And then it would suddenly pop up a Ubisoft Connect installer. And that was to make it seem like it was actually downloading something. But don't be fooled. Uh, we can immediately see PowerShell commands going to disable uh, Windows Defender, which is always shockingly easy to do. Then we add an exclusion for .exe, which functionally completely nullifies Windows Defender. And then we get, a, then we go right into malicious activity. Now, we can use anyone's script tracing tool to actually see everything that this does. So we can see it's checking this, it's getting, and now you can see we've got a well-disguised C2 server that looks like it could be OneDrive updates, but that is actually fake. It's downloading an MSHTA attack, which is going to be the next step. And once again, we can see more fake OneDrive shenanigans. Now it's created a scheduled task. So this one will run every time you log in. Now let's take a look at the more serious ones. Now these are luckily less common. The main reason that you see less of these is because Rats require quite a bit of monitoring on the threat actor's part. We're going to open a new tab and we're going to do some analysis. 
Unlike an info stealer, which is basically a set it and forget it solution from the threat actor's perspective, a rat requires them to actually monitor it. The reason why it is more dangerous is because it gives complete and total access to your whole computer that usually using something called a HVNC, a hidden VNC, which is basically like them having a second monitor that you cannot see. Let's see what this one does. Now we're going to put on a residential proxy, make this a bit more difficult. And I'll put this on this so that I can share in the description the link so that you can follow the analysis. And then we'll choose, we can choose our tools. Do we want complete? Yes. That can also help with anti-analysis, makes it look more legit. We're going to use Windows 11. And I'm going to throw on the automated interactivity, which is mainly for batch processing because it will automatically interact, approve dialogues. It defeats basic anti-analysis that way. And it means that you can have a completely automated malware analysis workflow. So we can immediately see this is connecting to a unusual port. And now a Yarrow rule is detecting this as a rat. So I'm just going to add some time to see if the actor does anything. You can see here what looks like potential C2 activity. We also have the ability to download a memory dump that helps defeat some of the basic packing. This is Valley Rat. This is a newer one, but there's plenty of... Uh, plenty of different rats about. So ultimately, the solution to dealing with rats is going to be mostly the same. You've either got to be very confident you know where the thing is running out of. Uh, this one is currently seems to be just running out of its uh, home directory, but let's see if it's, it's created a mutex. Sent some packets to this IP, which is with a hosting group, and it's, it's loaded a few modules. Hasn't modified the registry though, so that's good. Now let's take a look at another one. I'm gonna run this one as well. Now here we go. We can of course customize this. This is all running in the cloud, which is great, uh, especially when you're testing a rat, because you don't really want you don't really want rats because there's going to be another person controlling the remote environment. You don't really want them being able to test and try and break out of your environment, DDoS you. So we'll just we'll go with that. Turn on the residential proxy. And we'll go right to work. That's interesting. So it's detecting a HTTP debugger, which could be, if that's a real positive, that could be an indication of a, of a using a legitimate tool for less than legitimate purposes. And now it has created a persistent runner in something that could, to an unknowing user, look uh, legitimate. Now, any run has added something new here that's quite cool called actions, which will look for things that have recently been added. So, so like, for example, a auto run entry that's been added and automatically run it so that you can keep detonating. Now, if you use the ML based auto running tool, it will actually do that automatically. And here is this hidden folder that has a very convincing name. And now this Windows login application.exe is running probably fake Windows update. So we got some cool uh, detections here. Now we can see a dynamic DNS service that could be used to find. And here it seems like it's found the C2 for the rat. And we can see this has automatically got a red flag. This one is a bit stealthier in that you could be fooled into thinking this was a real Windows update or login application. In general, EXE's running as hidden files is bad news, but if you don't have hidden files showing enabled, not a great sign. Now we can also go through and we can see any potential indicators of compromise created, non-standard port, and see this was, this went and added an auto run for Windows login application.exe, which is very shady. And that also, you can also use the information gained from running in a sandbox as a way of knowing how to remove this. Because if you could remove that file, you now know, okay, that's the only place that it's installed. Uh, let's get rid of this rat. What other mitigation steps should you take uh, if you've gotten a rat? Well, I would be even stricter about changing things. 
because unlike an info stealer, which is a pre-programmed tool, an info stealer is going to steal your browser cookies, your browser password manager, your regular password manager if you don't have it set in such a way that they can't. Like, for example, with Bitwarden, you can make it so that it'll ask you for the password every time. That might protect it. Uh, your crypto wallets, if you have any. Of course, that's probably already gone by the time you've noticed. Uh, and your saved payment details on your browser. All of that is probably compromised. Most info stealers are not persistent, but some are. That you can, like, if you're finding stuff in auto runs called stealer, that means it is persistent. With rats, they're almost always persistent, and anything that was accessible from the computer is at risk. The other thing you gotta watch out for with rats, because the threat actor is able to work from your computer, meaning that instead of getting a suspicious login alert, they can do it from your setup, so you may not get any alerts that anything is out of the ordinary. There may not be any weird IP addresses. And as a result, it may also be harder to convince uh, companies that you've been hacked. So with that, I would simply look at everything on that computer, anything that could have been compromised, and I would ch change it if at all possible. That's why it's a good idea to use a password manager, is so that if you do have a compromise, you can immediately update every single one to something new, randomly generated, and you're probably safe. And remember, prevention is the biggest cure here. First of all, by not running sketchy stuff, and also by not creating a situation where a single compromise into your computer is everything. Like, don't have your social security number and ID documents in an unencrypted folder on your computer. Because if there's no way to access it, they won't be able to. So that is all for this. Thank you to Anyrun uh, for sponsoring. I will have a link in the description to check out their sandbox, and we're just going to quickly go over what's available. So you can get started for free with your business or university email right at the link in the description, and that'll get you a ton of really good features. You get the key stuff, like a cloud-based sandbox that requires no local setup, fast auto-detections, and cool features like configuration dumping and memory dumps for when you want to go deeper. Then, if you get the Hunter plan, which is what I have, it's $299 a month, uh, you can get private mode, which means, like, if you're doing, making sure that your company's files are not going to end up on a public search, you can get a high-quality video recording of the sandbox detonation, you can use MITM proxy so that if the malware communicates over HTTPS, you can get that, and you're allowed to use it commercially. You can also see you get quite a bit more operating systems, and you get access, and I'm going to be making a video on that, uh, about an API that's going to let you automatically build a malware processing workflow through any run. You can get a browser extension, and you can get a lot of cool stuff. So that's going to be all for me for now. Please do let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video and what you want to see next. Bye!